finally happened. Gas prices have gotten so high that we can't really afford gas. And so I'm going to the grocery store uh, by bike and that's pretty much how it's gonna be from now on. Uh, even if the grocery store has anything left and that's that's a big if. So, so welcome to another week of Food Mageddon. It hasn't been yet, but the bike will start to become a more central part of our lives here because there is no more efficient way to train, to translate uh, human leg power, you know, the strongest muscles on our body into, into movement. So you see a lot more of the bike as we go along here. potato bug season and I have been neglectful of my potatoes which is kind of stupid because potatoes are my big source of calories for the winter it's one of the few real problems that potatoes have these Colorado potato beetles and usually I like to plant a little later and that takes care of a lot of them but this year I planted early and now I'm reaping the whirlwind. So every night, I get to come out and clean my potatoes, which is actually kind of nice. It's a nice time of day, except for the mosquitoes. soap water in them. That's it. It's time to have a look-see what's going on here with our bees. So this one should be raising a new queen, and this one should be raising a new queen. This one has my old queen, so I'm hoping that when I go in here, I will see a capped queen cell. Got a kind of stunted queen cell there. I'm not very happy with that one. So right there, there's a stunted queen cell. If I find another one, I will scratch that one off, because you want a nice big fat queen cell, so you get a nice big fat queen. These guys don't have a good queen cell, so I think what I'm going to do is just combine them back with this hive, assuming they have a good queen cell. Because there's no, it's too late now for them to raise a queen cell and go into the winter with any amount of strength. So. So instead of having three hives going into the winter, which is my preference, I'm going to have two. 
but that's just how it goes. So I'll pop this lid back on. Now we'll check out this hive. So there should be some honey in these, but not super concerned about that yet. Eh, nope. That's too light to have much honey in it. Bummer. Hopefully this one has some honey in it. Yeah, one's starting to get some honey. And now in here I want to see a queen cell. Or perhaps an uncapped queen cell. She could have already emerged. Meaning hatched from her cell. The queen actually takes less time to gestate than a, a worker. Yeah, we've got torn open queen cells. So there's a queen in here somewhere. But right now she's probably a virgin queen. Because once she emerges, she takes about a week to adjust and then break out and go mate. But right down here, got an emerged queen cell. Or uh, an opened queen cell. So there's probably a queen here. I'm not going to bother them much right now. So I'm going to want to come back in a week to make sure that I have a laying queen. So now what I'm going to do is put a layer of wet newspaper on top here. This is the wet one. That one's dry, so together they'll be wet. And the bees will have no trouble chewing through this in a day. And this slowly integrates the two beehives because bees are obviously protective of their, of their hive. And so if I were to just plunk down this old beehive over here, or this beehive here with its own established population, if I were just to plunk it down there, they might fight. But if I put this, if I put this here, now they have to chew through that newspaper before they integrate. And that will give them a little time to become acclimatized. And also once they are into one another, they will have a bit of time We'll give that a bit of time. We'll have one hive, and then I'll consolidate and pick out all the different honey, honey frames, and I'll, I'll, I'll move that all around. So now I'm gonna pop into this one, which has an existing queen, and they probably need more space. So I plunked the queen down with a few frames, empty frames, and some honey. Man, I got runny bees. It's not really my favorite attribute. Runny just means that they sprint around rather than walk which is not great when you're trying to find the queen if everyone's running it's nicer when they're going slowly here we have worker bees filling up this honey frame with honey and here we have brood hatching out I'd like to see a stronger brood pattern here got fresh young larvae and eggs I mean the queen is around boy they are running a lot of pollen Boy, they are not using this resources. Man, they are really not building up, are they? Well, due to their lackluster buildup, I'm going to pull out some of these non-built up frames. And give them just drawn comb. That's basically bee frames ready to be moved into. And see, see if they can get their show on the road, because they are not looking very productive right now hopefully this will encourage the queen to start laying not looking as good as I'd like it to at this point in the year these this hive should be exploding with bees and we kind of depend on our honey resources for uh, having enough sugar to get through the winter it's a lot of calories all right well pop this lid on see what happens We'll be back in a few weeks, girls. Okay, now that when I open these, it doesn't bubble anymore. And they've turned to kind of a dull green color instead of a bright green color. It's time to hot pack them. Never mind the, the, the bus being pushed around by the boy over there. Um, <coughs> yes. So I'm gonna pour off this liquid, boil it, and then pour it back in here and close the lids really tight and make sure that it, it'll then, um, kind of like when you can things, it's basically just hot packing. It's not as good for preserving things as uh, hot, hot water canning, which I could do with these had I put them in actual ball jars. I don't trust these jars to, to boil these um, and seal, but it's a 
simpler way to do it, and for the most part, it's... Okay, everything I say, take with a grain of salt, do at your own risk, don't come back to me and say, I got botulism. Huh. But what has worked for us in the past is hot packing these, we've never had any issue. This is a common way to do things in a lot of the Slavic world where lacto-fermented um, foods are super common and just pouring the hot boiling brine back into these is enough to um, sterilize or kill enough of the bad germs uh, that things are generally safe. We're going to be doing pickles in almost the exact same way uh, probably by the end of the week. guy goes to the stove and now we can get this brine back in here after it's boiled there's one make sure this is nice and free of any seal that nice and tight now the next so now we'll let these sit until they cool and hopefully they'll even click in and have a good hot pack seal, which should be good enough uh, to keep them through this winter because of the high acid content. We don't need to kill all the bad organisms because that high acid content from the lactic acid that was produced during the fermentation process will keep these safe enough. Safe enough. Again, use this idea at your own risk. Time to harvest peas. Now I just have to shell and dry all these peas. And then over here on the other side I've got my fava beans that have nice flowers on them and hopefully I'll start to get some beans off of these soon. Um, oh yeah, here we go. Got some fava beans growing right here already so hopefully these will start producing and we'll get, uh, we'll get a nice bunch of those. And here we have cucumbers. They're just about up to trellis level that I planted here. That one just about reached the trellis. We'll give it another day. And really minimal weed load, really just a little bit here and there coming up through the cardboard. So it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good system. Okay, my friend Herman uh, is from Ukraine and he once gave us these amazing pickles and so I'm going to recreate his Pickle recipe, thanks to him for sending that along by email. Um, so it's a, I guess you could pickle all kinds of vegetables, but I'm pickling uh, cucumbers. The cucumbers have really been coming in now for a week. We've been eating a lot of them, but this is what I've been managed to save from the hungry masses that have been eating all my pickles, or all my cucumbers. And so I'm gonna toss in, I don't know, a half dozen cloves of garlic. And then Herman suggested horseradish leaves, but I've got grape leaves, which basically do the same thing. They've got lacto-friendly bacteria and other things that help fermentation on them. So put those in. And I've got some sprigs of dill, heads of dill. And now I'm cutting off a quarter inch of the blossom end of these pickles because you can, the blossom has some things that will cause the pickles to become soft and unpalatable. So I just cut those off as I put them in. And then I pour in, uh, I'm starting with two quarts of water for each quart of water, I add two tablespoons of salt. And then to keep these things underwater, put down a plate and that pushes them below the water line. And I need to put a little weight on top of that. 
He's using a jar of beans. You can use anything that can be washed. Some people use rocks, that's totally fine too. And now up here, it's too warm. So we're gonna have to move this down to the basement where it's considerably colder. So down here in the basement is a much more conducive spot to let this ferment. It's, consider it's considerably cooler, under 70 degrees. And I'll just let this sit and ferment for two to five or more days, we'll see. Um, and then we'll move on to the next step, probably in, in next week's episode. As you can see, we still have quite a few stores um, and we're already adding that back to it. We're adding, we added, here's our maple syrup and you know extra salt that we bought at the last grocery store run. Um, we're trying to build up as we start to draw down. We're almost getting low on flour and oats, so we should be harvesting those soon, but uh, as things become increasingly scarce at the grocery store, this store that we built up uh, in the spring is, is very important. And I'm just now realizing that I am kind of out of chicken feed. So, I'm gonna have to do something. I've got a little bit of chicken scratch left. That's not really full nutrition for them. Um, I have a little bit of some food for young chickens, but for the most part it looks like I am out of chicken feet already. Huh. Alright, well, that's a problem. It's also raspberry season, and these are going to become more important as the winter goes on. Just to have a little reminder of uh, warm summer days, just to have these uh, raspberries available for us in the form of jam. I'll dehydrate a whole bunch and we'll pop them in our granola. Uh, it's just a nice little treat to have as things get cold and dark. These are black cap raspberries. They're wild. Uh, when we moved into this property, it was completely bushed over. This was all, well, <laughs> still is pretty brushy. And uh, I was pulling out all these ra raspberries, which are really good colonizers. They like you know, recently abandoned late locations. And uh, I was pulling these all out and I was gonna plant a whole raspberry patch anyway with purchased raspberries. And I thought to myself, why am I pulling out all these raspberries that clearly thrive here uh, to buy finicky store-bought ones? And so what I did was I transplanted all these raspberries over into this area. And now I trellis them and keep them fertilized and pruned and happy. Um, as best I can, but it was uh, an existing resource that I thought, oh, this would be a great money saving and also availability sort of thing. So perhaps there's raspberries or other existing wild fruits in your area that you could harness during this time of, uh, of stress that we're all experiencing. has one long circuitous maze or pathway so if you walk the entire length of it you'll see both sides of every bush. Thanks for joining us at Friend of the Week on Food Mageddon. Uh, we uh, had another busy week and we'll have another one coming up next week so uh, make sure to subscribe uh, so you'll get our next episode as soon as it comes out make sure to check out our website lowtechinstitute.org you can always send me an email scott at lowtechinstitute.org all right thanks have a good week hope you're doing okay